Hi crafters, welcome to again an extra lesson and I don't mind giving you these extra lessons because they contain I think information that can help uh, new users uh, that struggle with unpacking their machine, using it for the first time or give tips and tricks to people who didn't know about the things I discovered in all these years. So bear with me, I will explain. I connected my machine to my computer, put in the plugs, and now you see that I get, um, how do I call that, blade settings. I think that's the best way to call it. In the last video, uh, or in the last extra video, I showed you that you can select and deselect objects that are placed on your mat. Um, what you could do is, there is an option to choose materials, and it's in the upper section. Sometimes this is divided into sides. It doesn't matter, it's the same thing. The only thing you must know is that we all use different kind of papers, even I. I have, for example, two brands. If I take Pion paper, that's very thin. If I take Maya design paper, that's very thick. If I need base paper, I use bezel basic cardstock, but mine has a... Um, how do you call that? A, a texture. In the Netherlands it's hard to find smooth paper. I have it, but it's very hard to find good paper. Uh, good paper for a digital machine. That's, that's the best way I can say it. I never ever ever look at this... Um, well option sheet where I can pick out uh, something that I want to cut. Only when I cut, for instance, vinyl, I can go to the vinyl option. I don't know if I can go to there very fast. Yeah, here I have my vinyl options. Sometimes I just pick it as a little bit of a guide, but I always need to uh, adjust the settings myself. If you cut a certain material for the first time, do um, something like a pre-cut. Just draw a little circle in the corner, stick down a little piece of material to your mat and check if it's cut properly. When I just cut paper, I always have it on cardstock smooth. This is Dutch, I know, but it means smooth. I never ever change these, but that's my personal way to do it. You don't have to follow it. It's also important what kind of blade you are using. I use the white blade that can cut thick materials. I only use this one and I use the black old ones because the ones that uh, are or also out there that uh, set themselves, I hate those. Those are also white but um, it's hard to explain, maybe one day I will do a separate video about it. but. Let's assume you all take the blade, and I have to check into my machine. This is the blade I'm using, is a white blade that can cut thick materials and has a purple cap. It's all white, but with a purple cap. So just so you know that you have uh, or know what kind of blade I am using right now to do or to give you an idea on how I do my settings. Now I turn, uh, put in my blade again, my machine recognize is my blade and I have here blade depth, 
this is the waist, the, the number of cuts it makes on the same places. And here you have the pressure and here you have the speed. Those four are super duper important. Each and every machine is different. Each and every machine needs different settings. I discovered that along the way because I normally buy the newest design or sorry, the newest release machine just to keep up with all the new things that the machine has. I have a Silhouette Cameo 4 um, and I use the white blade with the purple cap that can cut thick materials. Those two things are important. I discovered with the paper I'm using, I have to put the blade depth on 9. And normally when I had my Silhouette Cameo 3, I did not have to put this one one level up. So the number of times it cuts on the same position. But I discovered with the new Cameo 4, I have a pink one, <laughs> if you wonder, um, I have to put this on 2. The pressure I put on 21 or 22. The pressure is the pressure that the blade has to cut through your paper. The machine will put this force onto your blade to cut through your materials. If I do only one pass, it will not cut fully through. Although I'm on the almost high setting of a normal blade, and I'm not using a normal blade, but for a normal blade, 9 is very high, because when I had my Silhouette Cameo 3, I had to put my settings on 4, or 3 or 4, so it all depends on your machine. So I put my settings on 9, cut it two times at the same spot, and my speed is on 4. Logically, we think that if a cutting machine doesn't cut well, we have to increase or decrease, in this case decrease, the speed that it needs to cut. But sometimes it's smarter to up your speed. It depends on what you are cutting. If you cut simple objects like this, it isn't a problem to put up your speed higher. I wouldn't do higher than 4 or 5, but if you have something with a scalloped edge, and I will try to explain as best as I, I'm able to, Sorry, I need to get something with a scalloped edge. And I will take away all the other items on my mat. And I will zoom in so you can see what I do. Your machine hates especially points like this. And why? And I will show it to you what I mean. So, this is a hard point for your machine to cut. Why would you ask? Well, paper is built out of layers. So your paper has one layer and I can multiply this two layers, three layers. It depends on how thick your paper is. When you have a blade, and I will draw a blade as, as well as I am able, but let's pretend this is your blade. And I will zoom in so you can see what I mean. Your blade, and that's why I put it on two, uh, setting 2, the first time it will only cut something like this. So not all the way through all your layers. That's why I put it on setting 2, so that then it will cut like this all the way through my paper. It needs to go in sections through the thickness of my paper. It's not that I'm using that kind of thick paper, but that's what I discovered with the paper I'm using. 
a blade doesn't like to turn on his own position the blade that's in your um, cutter is what we call a, shiffle, a, a swivel blade so it can turn on its own position so imagine you take a, just a normal knife and want to cut this but then your knife needs to turn 100 and uh, sorry 360 degrees to be able to go the other way and here the same and what will it do it will uh, you have to see it like you put a knife into the butter just a little amount and then you turn your knife in into the butter on the same position then you will see that the butter will uh, climb up your knife and that's the same thing what paper does so when your blade comes here it turns on its own position and then continues to go to here and so on and so on until he does all your scallops so when you will have or, or sorry no I have to say this differently you will discover problems in this little small area with your paper your blade can go this way because it, it wasn't able to turn on its own position what I normally do to prevent that from happening is and I will take this away those little squares away if I have something with a scallop that I need to cut and let me put an outline on it and then center it and um, put the parts together what I normally do and I know it's a way of smuggling but it helps your machine of not struggling in these areas that you see selected here I will uh, put a beam over it and make sure it has a little itty bitty straight line to cut and not this these kind of very pointy items then I will weld this together and you see I still will be left with a scallop but my machine finds things like this a better way to cut because now if I zoom in you will see it way better it has an option to cut or to turn only 45 degrees and not 360 degrees on this position and the same here and it will help you uh, get a way better scalloped edge in real when it's cut you don't see a very big difference between what you have here and what you have here so my tip is the settings from all machines are different and if you want to do something with a scalloped edge make sure you cut off those very narrow lines the lines like this and it doesn't matter if you do it like this better is this so a little larger uh, straight line but it's possible to also do it like this it helps your machine cut way better through your paper so back to the settings my personal preference is 9, 2, 22 and 4. I always use the same papers, just so I use these settings a lot. If you're not sure what the best settings are, just take a little scrap piece of paper, make sure it sticks well to your mat and do some test cuts. See what your machines like to do, uh, how uh, pressure sensitive your machine is um, yeah I think with telling you this I will have given you a lot of problem solving tips well I hope so I wish you all a nice day thank you for watching and until the next class bye bye